Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, when I was just sitting here and the opening was on and I was listening to it and watching the video of, you know, the little boy and I playing and laughing and singing and, and realizing that what do people want of every race, of every creed, of every nationality? Do we want to own another piece of land, another car? Do we want to be a certain religion? Do we want to be a Buddhist? Do we want to be a representative of a certain country or, or whatever? But really, as human beings, I mean, as simple as it seems, we really want to be happy. We want to know the joy of living. We want to experience every day that love, that joy, that bliss in this life. And, and the question is, how can we do that? How can we do that on a consistent level and on a consistent basis? How do we know that inner knowing, that truth, that thing that connects us all? That every religion, at the heart of every religion, is talked about. Is that love, that connection, that God, that truth, that transcendental experience. And that's really what, as every human being, no distinction and no exclusion wants to know that, that experience, that truth. And yet, somehow, in our lives, some more, some less, we're not having that joyous, that surrendered, that transcendental, that blissful experience of knowing that one true love, of knowing the connection between us all, of knowing the oneness. And one of the things that came to me that prevents this, for, for all of us, again, to one degree or another, is our knowing, our thinking we know. And then it struck me, you know, it's such an interesting thing. I said it earlier today, we were sitting around talking, is that, you know, here we are, all of us, every last one of us, are hurtling through space on this ball, this globe, this incredible planet Earth. You know, what keeps us here? What is the, the mystery of this existence for us? And yet what we try to make is everything reasonable in that. And if we could just let go, in a way, of that reason into that mystery, somehow through some set of tools, through some grace, through some magical experience or normal experience or some experience, and come into that world where reason is a smaller aspect of the infinite. And that's what we want. So tonight we have somebody who literally, I mean, as long as I've been involved in the spiritual path, he's been involved and he's been involved in things and, and, and been in the forefront of, of bringing people into that recognition, bringing people beyond reason into that love. He's perhaps best known for his uh, world-famous harmonic convergence. He's a, the originator and father of the whole Earth Festival. And probably just by saying that, you know I'm talking about Jose Arguez. And he's been involved in these things for so many years. He's done pioneering work with the Mayan calendar. He's the author, the author of two extraordinary, I think three or four extraordinary books, but the two latest ones, I think, are maybe the two most well-known are The Mayan Factor and Time in the Technosphere, which is a new one. He's the director of the Foundation for the Law of Time. And he has so much information to share. I mean, he was telling me today he's got like a, a, a 10 or 12 or 7 volume set that's just full of information that would blow the mind, that would blow the reason, the way we look at it, the way we experience it, most of us. And he's here, he here just, he flew in from Oregon, and he's flying out tomorrow just to share that love and share that information and share his gifts with us. So we're just completely honored to have him here with us. And we also have two extraordinary music videos that have never been shown for before. Uh, this group from Denver, we just got to know them. They sent this beautiful uh, music video, uh, Twin Flame, out of, uh, out of Denver. So we're going to show two amazing videos from them. So as we normally do, join me in a short meditation. Then we're going to have the first video. And then we're going to have uh, Jose uh, doing the... Uh, uh, we'll talk to him about his books and his ideas and his, 
his love and his consciousness. So I see that we have the flowers there. So just join me in a short meditation. Just relax, settle in, and we'll be available to do the video, and then Jose is going to be with us. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what we're going to start is tonight's show with a, a Twin Flame music video. It's called Peaceful Warrior. It was written and performed by Twin Flame, which is Rebecca Hilton and Wen Boley. It's from their CD, Peaceful Warrior. And the uh, video was shot at the uh, Peace Gathering concert in May of 2002 in Denver, Colorado. So Peaceful Warrior.
Jose. Welcome, Jose. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, well, it's a really great pleasure to be here, Alan, to say the very least. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So we were talking earlier today, and from an early age, you had experiences at seven when you went to the top of a uh, uh, pyramid in Mexico that kind of led you on to this path. Why don't you talk a little yeah, bit about Yeah, actually, that? it was when I was 14. Uh, when I was seven, I got put on the path of being an artist when I was 14. Oh, uh-huh. My father took me back down to Mexico where I'd lived as a youngster, and uh, all I wanted to do was go to the pyramids. I'd seen some books in his library, and we got down to Mexico City. We drove from Minnesota to Mexico. This was back in 1953 in the summer, and uh, uh, we got out to the pyramids at Teotihuacan, place where the gods touch the earth. That's the big, big, big ancient pyramid city, and they. The, the large pyramid there, the Pyramid of the Sun, which is as large as the uh, uh, Great Pyramid at Giza on the base, not as tall. Steps go up, but I ran up those steps. I said, hey, I got to get up there. And I got up to the top there before my brother and my father and my uncle. And I looked down and I saw, wow, this is really something. I thought of Mexico City and I thought of where this was. And I said, that's two different worlds. They're happy about Sears and Roebuck there, but this is something else. And as I'm sitting there looking at that, having those thoughts, like I'm having a big white light type of experience, kind of a uh, recollection of purpose, of destiny. And I knew at that point that my mission, my destiny in this life was to bring back the cosmic knowledge that helped build that city and bring it back into the modern world because my hunch was that the people in the modern world were going to be needing that cosmic knowledge. And that was my purpose. I had to wish and then I this you knew at 14 was clear to you. 14, totally clear. I got back to my hometown in Minnesota. I had a job at the public library, filing books, and there it was between Ospensky and something else. Sylvanus Griswold Morley's Civilization of the Ancient Maya. And I looked at that and I said, that's the one. It had a chapter on the calendar and astronomy and mathematics. I learned the mathematical system, I started studying the calendar, and I knew that was the path for me. And then, to complete kind of a cycle, I mean, after the, you know, you were involved in the harmonic convergence, after you were involved in Earth Day, I mean, really extraordinary events of our time. Uh, you went back there 49 years later with elders. Why don't you tell that story? And then yeah. we'll go into what kind of information yeah. they want you to impart. Yeah, I followed this path and, and all, all those things, like the harmonic convergence, that was all part of the prophecy. And it, it turns out last year, 2002, around March 3rd or so, I was down in Mexico. I thought I was going to be planning a ceremony for people in my group in the peace movement I'm leading. And instead, it turned out that, the, it turned out that uh, a group of elders, the Guardians of the Earth, a group of nine indigenous elders, shamans from different uh, tribes in Mexico, had gotten word that they were supposed to honor me. And there I was, marching up and down Teotihuacan. I got to the Pyramid of the Sun. The where, same one you were 49 years before. 49 years before, same place. Uh, they took me up to the top there and a great, great ceremony and they gave me a beautiful, beautiful sacred staff like I'd never seen before, obsidian and onyx and a lot of beautiful sculpted stuff on it. And that was given to me. They said that in their teachings and their prophecies, they knew that in this end time that there would be someone who would come along who would have a new knowledge based on the old knowledge, but a new knowledge, cosmic knowledge that would renew the tradition, that would renew the people of the earth, and that that person was me, and they honored me as being what they called the closer of the cycle, because we're talking about the cycle that ends in 2012. That was very mind-blowing experience, Alan, life-changing experience for me, too, because I sat up in that pyramid, and I said, wow, 49 years ago I had this vision, and here I am, and these elders are honoring me for it, and I held my vision. so. It's very, very powerful. It's very great to be alive and to have this mission and to have this sense of purpose for the people of the earth. Uh huh. Okay. Well, just what, what, what are you supposed to tell people? Here's a, here's an, yeah. here's a venue yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, Go, uh, boy. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, you know, when we say closer of the cycle, okay, when we say 2012, we're talking about the knowledge of the Mayan calendar, as it's called, though. 
that's a really, really one-dimensional word for a system that is so rich in uh, mathematics, prophecy, and understanding of our place in the cosmos. The, uh, the, the Mayan word for human being, wink lil, means cosmic vibratory root. We're supposed to be cosmic vibratory roots, but we're, we're stunted, and we're stunted from realizing that because the, the truth is that we are living in, in the incorrect time. The Mayans were the masters of time. They had 17 or 19 calendars that they used simultaneously. That's because they knew time is the factor of synchronization. Time is what synchronizes us. The harmonic convergence worked. Everybody got synchronized that morning. It was a synchronization event. So the point of it is that the that we're at the end of the cycle. Everyone knows, you know, something's going on. This is the end time. Is it going to be an apocalypse? What's going to happen? The Mayans say that December 21st, 2012, that's when the cycle closes. What cycle? Okay. The 5,125-year cycle of history, 26,000-year cycle of the, the sun going around, the earth going around the, uh, the ecliptic, and an even larger cycle, 104,000 your cycle. All these cycles are coming to an end. We are living in a really, really powerful, momentous event in time at this moment. So the closer of the cycle, it means that, that the closer of the cycle, they said, just keep doing what you're doing, follow the red road. The red road is the, the road, the good road, the path of truth to 2012. And uh, announce to people the time that we have to change the time. We live in a time of war and in a time of chaos. The time of war and chaos is locked up in the simple calendar we use every day. A calendar is a programming device. We don't understand that. And if we're going to make it to 2012 in peace and harmony with justice for all, we have to change the time. It's a big test for us humans to be able to do that. And the, the means of changing is to change the calendar. We have to uh, go from the irregular Gregorian calendar. A, a calendar is a standard of measure. If you have a standard of measure with units that don't correspond, the, the weeks and the months don't correspond, the months are uneven, it drives you crazy, actually. You couldn't, if you built a house with a standard of measure like that, it would be a very crooked house. And in many ways, the house that we live in in the world today is a crooked house. How, how did we come to go from a Mayan calendar to this irregular, disharmonious well, calendar? This, you know, you have to look at this. The Mayans were in the New World, and, and the Old World was, uh, was dominated by the Babylonian civilization and the Babylonian concepts of time, which are based on 12. The Mayan concept is based on 13. Before history, most people used a 13-month calendar. The Mayan prophecy that I decoded, the prophecy of Pakal Votan, who was buried in the tomb at Palenque, says that the, the, the means of uh, changing the time is to to go from the Gregorian 12-month calendar to go to the perfect harmonic perpetual 13-month 28-day calendar. The Mayans used that calendar among other calendars. The Aztecs used that calendar. Uh, the Druids used that calendar. The Incas of South America used that calendar. It's the universal calendar. <clears throat> and the point is to make it to 2012 with the, in peace and harmony, the message is we have to change the time. You change the time by changing the calendar. You change, when you change the calendar, you change the program. Like the Gregorian calendar program is full of static and chaos, confusion, injustice, oppression, all of that stuff, inequality. And if we change that, we go to a calendar that is, that is perfectly harmonic, perfectly perpetual, Every, every month is 28 days. Every month has four perfect weeks. Every month starts on Sunday and ends on Saturday. Every year starts on Sunday and ends on Saturday. Then we reintroduce harmony as the fundamental program of our life. And the point is that we are now up against, against the, the final moment. We are in the final moment. We're entering a point where we are going to be going into the final window when we can make this shift. And that's the, this window occurs between November 8th this year and July 26th, 2003. 2004. Yeah, yes, so 2003 November, to 2004. Correct, to 2004. 
Correct. And so, so if well, somebody's watching this show after that date, either yeah, it's been done. Yeah, well, you got to you got to get with it now. Get it out now. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then July 26, 2004. That's the that's the moment of the what we call the big calendar change. That's when we were going to be uh, beginning this shift in human consciousness, going from irregular mechanistic time to harmonic, perpetual, universal, cosmic time back to natural time, back to the time of the cycles of the universe. Right now, the human species is the only species that's out of joint. We're, we're totally out of order. We're out of order because we're following a mechanistic time, combined with, which is the clock, combined with the irregular time of the calendar, which creates a, a very crazy-making, accelerating process. Everyone is experiencing acceleration of time. Everyone is experiencing acceleration of consciousness. Was there any disharmony in the Mayan or the other civilizations well, that use that? I mean, it seems like there's been disharmony. There's been disharmony, and uh, there are different reasons for that, uh, that there have been introduced levels of, of disharmony. But in a fundamental way, when we look at the civilizations that use this, uh, that, that, are, that were following this um, Mayan timing standard that um, there's a very, very uh, uh, much higher level of harmony that we're dealing with. And we're also dealing with a knowledge base that uh, is very, very extensive and expansive. Um, uh, the Mayans would consider our concepts of time really primitive. <laughs> but like uh, in, in the uh, the space the, the people who supposedly were following this, like Atlantis and Lemuria, I mean, they had other problems, right? It, were they following the Mayan calendar mm -hmm. in that way, or were no. they on the Gregorian calendar? I think calendar? that, I think that, um, that when you talk about those places, we're also talking, you know, about, you know, we're introducing larger issues here besides the calendar. Um, right now, we'd have to say that the, that the program of the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, is a program that uh, is basically uh, inherited from the Roman times, which is inherited from the Babylonian times. And then you have to say, well, uh, that those those programs that they were that they were following, where did those come from? And then these are like the these were the faulty Atlantean programs and so on that then uh, got uh, resurfaced in this present cycle. This last cycle of time, this five thousand one hundred twenty-five year cycle of time from the cosmic galactic Mayan point of view. This was this is the time of the final testing, the final purging of of the previous Atlantises, the previous lost worlds, the previous planets that didn't make it. That all of that karma, all of the, all of those programs, all those faulty programs are now playing out their last their last uh, their last segues here on Earth right now. And and they have been uh, they, they have been playing out because they have been locked into this program, this Gregorian calendar program, and the the uh, the time. So that's what creates the time. And it's created a time like that to have all these, these these programs play out. Everything that we're seeing on happening on the planet today is like the final stages of this, and it's a big like cosmic drama. And so the the point of the Mayan time which isn't just like pure Mayan because we're, we're talking about, it's like saying Thomas Edison discovered electricity. Does that mean electricity is American? <laughs> okay, so like this Mayan. We'd like to think so yeah. here in America. <laughs> some, some people would. They like to put flags right, on the, right. on the on electrical the wires, Mayan, okay? Right. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, so the Mayan time is actually cosmic time. They, 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 knew, they knew the actual nature of the time of the cosmos, of the galaxy. And so we're at this point here where like, we're, we're finishing this time of test, this time of trials, like the human beings have been uh, in a, in a, having their final exam. And, uh, and, and they're playing they all these some cramming. Yeah, because, we got to do some cramming right now. Because it seems like right. Re Yeah, read my books and you can cram. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> Read time in the technosphere, and you can cram. Uh, the 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 point is that now we're at this final at this final uh, testing point, and 
uh, we got to t till 2012. From 2004 till 2012 is, is eight years, and so we have to begin to make the shift because um, when we when we change the program, then we're changing. We're, we're being given the opportunity to change the program. It's like God is saying, "Okay, you, you have this one last chance to change your program." Because that's the root of the problem. The reason why you, you haven't had peace yet is because you haven't understood you have to change the fundamental program. You're locked into a program of time that keeps your minds in a state of, of, of disharmony, that keeps you jagged, that keeps you accelerated, that keeps you in stress. Are you, would you say that, I mean, I know certain spiritual paths talk about, you know, a state of timelessness. Yes. Okay, so how does that, is that more expansive view of it or is this for like yeah well the timelessness is at the root of cosmic time <laughs> right okay. okay why don't you talk a little bit yeah. about that because i think it's interesting because yeah. to me i mean every, you know, every every mystic every great mystic at the root of you know like every like uh whether it's you know uh ramakrishna whether it's rumi whether it's saint francis everyone Every, what Huxley called the perennial philosophy. At the root of all that is an experience of, of timelessness. Timelessness is like what I call vertical time. Okay? Yeah, beyond religion. Yeah, but beyond, beyond all that, all because, right. because it, 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 you, you, it, it introduces a state of mind and being that uh, allows your soul, allows your consciousness to rise and to expand and to transcend the, the third dimensional physical, okay? It allows you to go into the fourth dimensional um, time space. And the, the, when you look at the, what we're talking about, a uh, cosmic timing standard like the 13 moon 28 day calendar, when we say perpetual, that means you want to introduce living on that uh, after a certain point that, that Perpetual time gets you to timelessness, okay? Because there's no distinction, okay? History is a function of irregular timing standards, okay? When you get to a point where you're on a regular timing is, standard, is, is it like that? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, didn't disharmony lead us to pick the wrong calendar, and then the wrong calendar led to more disharmony, yeah, and then you know, the a, cycle of you know which yeah, came it's first? Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting point because like you know, there's free will and and everything is preordained. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Okay. How do you deal with that? So, how do you walk yeah. the razor's edge yeah, of those so, two? Yeah, yeah so, go ahead. you got to about <laughs> explain how you would walk the razor's yeah, edge between yeah. those two. Yeah, so, but, the, you know, the, the actually the both are true. You know, right. I was reading a quote from John Lennon. John Lennon said, you know, I know everything is free, but, you know, uh, it's preordained, too. He, he was on to that. And that's, that's part of the paradox, you know. The dualistic mind can't deal with the paradox. You know, if you're going to go into that paradox, is this free will? Is this preordained? You have to, you have to develop a mind that's, that that's, that transcends Spencer, the, 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 right. the, dual, the dualism of, and, and can actually accept that both of those are true. So okay. what you're saying about the calendar is like at this time in this state we're in, that is like an important step because ultimately we want to be in the timelessness yes. because it doesn't matter you know who gets, yeah. you know with all yeah. due respect to all yeah. this stuff i mean we don't care if it's the 31st day the 28th day if yeah. we're in that state of timelessness yeah, yeah. but the, see the thing is that we have what well, we have conditioned ourselves so long by irregular and mechanistic timing standards that affects our mind it's like you have to it's like you know um, you've been wearing shoes that are too small they're cramping your feet. Well, you got to get out of them and put something else that helps make them, make them strong and better. Maybe in the end you get rid of the shoes altogether. You know. Right. Okay. It's kind of like that. So we have to we have to make the we we've become so uh, uh, almost immune to harmony. <laughs> we don't know what it feels. Yeah, like. we don't know what it feels like. So we have to we have to get used to harmony again. That's that's the whole point of this calendar. So change. you're saying this calendar change is a big tool to reinvigorate the experience of harmony for people, that that is an impediment. Absolutely. Not that people haven't broken through that yeah. impediment yeah. throughout history, the one or two, yeah. but for a whole but for the species. Whole, but for the whole species, the whole species has never been unified in a harmonic standard. And the opportunity exists today to become unified in a harmonic standard and to, ex and to experience uh, harmonic 
unity, harmonic synchronization. And this is, this is what we want. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants, you know, like what you were saying at the beginning of the show and your meditation. Everyone wants to live a joyous, blissful life every day. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what boundaries there exist. Borders will disappear when we live in harmony. Governments right. will disappear when we live in harmony. Right, those illusions. Yeah, are those, so are, all, yeah, those right. are all illusions that keep us cramped, and they're all, and they're all fixed in, in, and rooted in, in, uh, in the calendar. Everything, every, so all you the would programs. say, see, it's just like, again, it's like the chicken and the egg. So, but you really think that it dis, that our disharmony is, is so much caused by that calendar. Well, let's think about that, and we'll show the other video, which is an interesting video, because mm, yeah. it's, it's called uh, How Long. You know, how long are we going to be like this? And it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And again, this is uh, by uh, Twin Flame, Rebecca Hilton, and Wen Boley. Uh, it's from their CD, Peaceful Warrior. Okay, so it's How Long. If you would let your minds drift back in time to a critical turning point in human consciousness, a morning last September.
back on the set with Jose. So there was a section in your book where you talked about the World Trade Center. Yeah. yeah why don't you start from there? Yeah, you know, in time in the technosphere, the, I wrote that book right after the, the, the Twin Towers, you know. Um, I thought about that, and then I, I realized what was going on because I realized that this had a lot to do with 2012. And um, in the in time of the technosphere, I described the events of 9-11 as being the inevitable event. And the inevitable event meaning that all the different forces of history, all the different that had been unresolved, all the different karmic forces, all the different programs that were locked up in the calendar that had, uh, see, when we talk about this um, calendar, we have the, 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 and the, and the clock, we were talking about the creation of an artificial timing frequency. And the human beings are operating by this artificial timing frequency. And because of that, they have um, extruded, extruded an artificial environment called the technosphere. Now, the technosphere lives at the expense of the biosphere. The biosphere is the natural environment of the, the living environment of the Earth. It's called the biosphere. So the technosphere is like this large cancer, this large parasite that lives at the expense of the, of the biosphere. There's a certain point at which the biosphere can no longer sustain the technosphere. Now the technosphere isn't just technology, it's the way technology is used and our consciousness about technology. Exactly. It's the whole, it's the whole web of what we, what we might today call globalization, that state of consciousness of globalization, the, the consumerism, the whole of it. Okay, the technosphere includes like it's, it's, it's the commodities, it's the, it's, the, it's the urban centers, it's the energy, it's the communication. The separation. The transport. Yeah, yeah, all, all of that, that keeps that everything right. going and creates further separation, further alienation of the human being from nature. Uh, all of that is the technosphere. The biosphere is the natural environment. At, at a certain point, the, uh, the bio, the, the, there's a point at which the biosphere can no longer sustain the, the technosphere, and so that begins to collapse. The Twin Towers, the World Trade Center, was described in 1985 by scientists who study and define the biosphere as the hub of the technosphere. So when those towers went down, it doesn't matter whether it was actually terrorists or who did it, how it happened, why it happened. It happened. It happened. It inevitably happened. It was the nerve center, the pineal gland of the technosphere was taken and, out. And the technosphere ha has to evolve if the planet's going to yeah. survive. Well, it has to evolve into the back into harmony. It has to evolve back. And, and so that point there, that puncture, that was a big puncturing of the technosphere. So now there's a lot of retrograde, you know, regressive action to try to maintain it but it's not going to hold because the biosphere is in danger, the global warming, everything else. So what you're seeing is like the technosphere is slowly be going to be coming down. It's not pretty, but it's, it's coming down because it's not the truth. It's not natural. It's not the truth. It exists at the expense of the biosphere. It exists at the expense of the Amazonian rainforest. It exists at the expense of the, of, the, of the different species and, and, and everything. Right. So it's inevitable, it's coming down. That's why it's called, this is why this is called the end time. And it's coming down because we're headed to 2012. So the point is that, okay, we have to just say, hey, it's coming down. You know, no matter how many flags you fly, it's still coming down. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we're saying, instead of flying flags, let's see what else we can do. Let's see if we can uh, do something about it, and the Mayan prophecies say, yes, you can do something about it. Just change your timing frequency, get back with the big universal evolutionary program. You just took a big detour from evolutionary mainstream. You caused yourself a lot of suffering, and uh, some people might be well off from this, but a lot of other people are suffering more and more every day, and you're playing with very dangerous toys to protect a crumbling facade. That's all that's all that's happening is the whole facade of civilization is just coming down. We want to defend it with bombs and wars and so on, but that's not all that's going to do is further the process of it coming down. It's all inevitable. So the point is, 
Um, we have the opportunity. How many people in the world are for peace? And how many people in the world really are for war? If everyone in the world who exists in the world is for peace could understand this point that we can all have peace if we unify and change the time and say, that's it. We're going into a new time. We're going from a time of war to a time of peace. We're going from a time of fear to a time of love. We're going from a time of chaos to a time of harmony. We're going to solve our problems ourselves, and we're going to enter a new, a new time that is going to reorganize our mind, that's going to reorganize um, how we function in the world, that's going to reorganize our priorities. Rather than building more things, we want to, dam we want to repair the damage rather than, than continuing to exploit and consume all the resources. We want, to, we want to stop and begin to explore our mind. The human species at this point consumes more resources than it can replace and creates more waste than it can get rid of. That sounds like a perfect. Yeah, perfect you're not, that's not. You're not going to get very far with that's that. That's a beautiful balance. Yeah, well, that's an so, equation that everyone wants. Yeah, <laughs> so you know you're not. You're going to run out pretty fast that way, and you're going to die in your own toxic waste on top of it. So the point is. Wow, uh, there's a dream come true. <laughs> the point wow. is, we, we can we can get out of that. We can get out of that, and we can be heroic. We can be heroic and say. Um, we can stop this. Let's stop this. Let's let's. And you say one of the, the first dominoes that we can do to stop this is to change the way we view calendar time. Time, yes, exactly. Because the calendar is the macro programming device of a culture, of a society, of a people. In other words, when we say that everyone in this culture, from the American culture, you know, for instance, say. They're programmed by that. Okay, July 4th is coming up. Big knee-jerk reactions. December 25th is Christmas. But do you Christmas. think if, if the consciousness doesn't change again, it's like the chicken and the egg, that it won't be July 4th, it'll be September 3rd no, where we it'll saved change, it. It'll change the consciousness. It'll change the it'll consciousness. It'll change the consciousness. I talk to people on airplanes, I talk to people everywhere who never heard about this, you know, and usually they say, we're going to change the calendar, and the first thing they say is, um, what's going to happen to Christmas? Or <laughs> yeah, no, I was a little you know, concerned about all the uh, horoscopes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. If I'm not you know, Pisces well, anymore, what's, we're, my, we're, what's this, my life about? This is, this is the time of the big change. It changes us or we change. We can change and before we get totally changed in the wrong way. Okay, it's, it, says, it says in the Quran, uh, it's, not, it's not difficult at all for God to change to, re to remove you and put in other people there. <laughs> okay, It's not difficult for us to be erased from our program because we're not getting the lesson. Or we can be courageous and say, oh, I think there's a point here. Let's change the program and see what happens. Shift our priorities and, and begin to make this shift. And I guarantee you that just the very act of making, of getting together to make this change will synchronize and unify so many people that it will stun the governments and stun the corporations and say, hey, there's a new thing, there's a new thing happening on the earth. To change the calendar is, an act, is actually an evolutionary act. And it's an act that furthers the mind. We say, when there's the biosphere and the artificial construct of the technosphere, what comes after that in the evolutionary scheme is the noosphere. That's the mental field, the unified mental field around planet Earth. Teilhard de Chardin wrote about this. The science, Russian scientist Vladimir Vernadsky wrote about this. Both those guys coined the term, actually, in Paris in 1926. And the noosphere is the next stage of evolution. We've gone as far as we can go on the physical plane. The only place to go is in the mind and in the spirit. We have, and, and because we've been so materialistic, our mind and spirits have become stunted. We got to expand. The only place to go at the time is 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 to into the spirit and the mind. And that's the other the other point is we haven't understood time. Time is of the mind. Time is of the spirit. Space is physical. You know, we can see it. We can look at it. We can touch it. We can taste it. We can smell it. We can feel it. But time, time is of the mind. 
we haven't explored time. Time is where we're going. Time is where we are. And at the center of time is that timelessness you're talking about. We all want to experience that. We want to have that as the central program of our society. But we're not going to get there until we change the time. So we either change the time or the time changes us. The time is changing us very rapidly right now. And the, the opportunity so, now exists to change it. Is there another avenue into that harmony? Is it, in other words, can, some, can something else be changed? Can some, as far as you look at it, let's say we keep the same mm -hmm. calendar with Christmas, and July 4th Won't and all work. that. No, no work. No work. No work. No, work. no other way. You know, if everyone did uh, no, 20 people, minutes people, of, people uh, tried and that. got bumped off the ground or whatever. No, won't work. no way. No Nothing way. Nothing happened. We've got you know, all the spiritual teachings in the world exist right now, and we're farther from unity, we're farther from peace than we've ever been. You would say? Yeah, I would say. I uh -huh. would say. I'd say, and I'd say right now that, that the situation is so dangerous. You know, that I know, I mean, we've done po global peace meditations, we've, we've got, you know, we've, we've tried. But you don't see it as like all those things are like reaching out to the, to the you know, like the hundredth monkey and we're up to 93 and yeah. it doesn't look like anything's yeah. happening, but somehow, no, you know, No, you're not, no, you get, you no, have to, you got to change the, see the thing is, you can pull together everybody who's, who's doing good, everybody who's working for They're peace. They're all in this room, so yeah. <laughs> it won't take yeah. long. Everybody's <laughs> working for good, doing good, working for peace. And, and they're all in their different, different stream. Pull them all together and say, you want to do one thing that's going to change the way people think, that's going to make the paradigm shift, make this change of calendar. It's, it's the only thing. So in other words, the prophecies you've been told is that that's the central that's it. part. Period. Period. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Go, boy. Yeah. Yes. Hey, because it's the time. I'm telling you, we haven't thought about it. The Mayans thought about it a lot. I'm a galactic Mayan. I'm on Earth here to give you this message. Uh -huh. That's all, it's just as simple as that. Change your time and you'll save yourself. It'll give you something different to do, just to, fig just to figure it out. To it's gonna elevate your consciousness. Think of all the people making calendars, they'll be busy as hell. And you're, gonna, and you're gonna change your consciousness. You're gonna change your consciousness. Okay, explain, explain the path of changing the calendar into changing the consciousness. Yeah, okay. What's today? Today? Yeah, what is today? What day is it today? Uh, it's Friday, June 27th, Earth yeah. time. Okay, 2003. 2003, okay. Yeah, well, that's one, that's one program. Um, what if I say today is the uh, cosmic moon, Dolly 1. It's the first day of the cosmic moon. It's the day, it's also... Um, uh, in 125, it's red galactic serpent, and it's the red planetary moon year. That's going to change your consciousness just to contemplate what that is and say, we're never going to have June again. We're never going to have April again. Okay? That's going to change the way you think. Albert Einstein, before he died, he said, since the advent of the nuclear age, everything has changed but the way people think. And because of that, um, we, we drift, we are drifting towards catastrophe. If you want to change the way people think on an everyday basis, really change the way they think, change the calendar. It's going to change the way they think. It's going to, because the, by if, introducing... If all of us understood, like, I mean, could you say that, you know, these are just like, constructs and it depends how deep the constructs go. In other words, if you and I were trying to meet somewhere, mm -hmm. like we were, you know, I was sure. picking you up at the mm -hmm. airport. Mm -hmm. If you and I both knew that, you know, this plane was coming in on the, the mm -hmm. wizard, mm -hmm. the red wizard mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. and we all had an agreement about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't, want, you wouldn't want to show up on the red wizard day and I was showing up on the white lotus mm -hmm. day, right? Mm -hmm. That feels yeah. long way. So yeah. how do we, you know, how do we, you know, come to an agreement. Isn't part of what all these things are is an agreement? You know, that mo we wear clothes most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's a right agreement or a wrong agreement, mm -hmm. we could do well, that. You, but have to, you have to understand something, okay? <laughs> Probably a lot. Yeah. Go um, this, this matter of time, 
and this matter of calendars is, is far uh, deeper, actually, than uh, when we're going to meet, okay, or setting up appointments. That's how we think of it. It's actually, um, we don't understand that we're lo or the time we're living locks us into the third dimension, where that's why we, we, we have so many efforts at getting spiritual courses or doing this or that to, to get, get a little peek into the fourth dimension. But, but, but if you know, listen, just yeah, let me just finish, uh, finish this, that the, when we're talking about the, the harmonic standard of the 13 moon 28 day calendar, that is locked into a fourth dimensional experience of time, which actually go, has graduated levels and layers of uh, elevation of consciousness that, that most people right now wouldn't even dream exist. And so I'm just saying that, that by not taking this opportunity, we're, 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 we are um, forfeiting the possibility of expanding our consciousness in ways way beyond what, what even the greatest mystics and dreamers have conceived of. This is, we're talking evolution. It's an evolutionary step. It's not just like saying I'm going to buy uh, uh, a, a Toyota instead of a Chrysler, okay? It's not, li li not like that at all, okay? It's like um, it's trading in a par one, an old paradigm for a new paradigm, and the new paradigm is a paradigm of time and not of space. The new paradigm is a paradigm of spirit and not of matter. And we're talking about a qualitative evolutionary shift in consciousness. And just to, just to come together and synchronize on this point, just, just as an act of goodwill, is Gandhi said about the calendar reform movement in the 1930s, he totally approved of that calendar reform movement because it brought people together in peace on a matter that transcends that transcends all the differences. I was wow. talking in I was talking in, in uh, Europe and at one time and not and sometime in the nineties. I think we and, only have thirty seconds. Okay. So whatever you want to say in thirty uh, hey. seconds, go get them. <laughs> and, and a Palestinian came to me and said, Do you think if we introduced a calendar that we would have a, a higher uh, point of dialogue? And I said, Yeah. And he said, I think you have a point. That's Let's a try good, it. Okay. That's a good plan. Yeah. All right. So we're coming to the end of the show, and obviously an enormous amount was said, an enormous amount of energy was vibrated out. So, you know, I hope you taped the show because I think so much was said that that really you should sit with and listen to. The book is Time in the Technosphere. If you want any information, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. God bless you. We love you. Come again. <laughs>